Hey guys, to build a glitchy text effect like what we just saw in the intro, the first thing we'll do is to bring the Fusion Composition clip to our timeline. And here, we're just going to directly take it to the Fusion page. And then the first thing we'll do here is to bring the text node into the node system, connect it to Media Out 1. And then we're just going to enter our text here and then change the font size as well as the font to our liking. And then we're going to tackle this from two areas, texture and movement. So to build our texture, the first thing we'll do is to go to open FX, under stylize, bring prism blur node into the node system. And here we're already getting that glitchy look. So um, the first thing we'll do is to move the direction of the prism. Um, and then we're going to bring the blur strength all the way down because uh, I don't want any blur here. Uh, and then aberration distance, bring that down a little bit. And then for aberration strength, we're gonna crank this up, bring all the way up. So this is the look that I had in mind. You, you can definitely experiment with uh, experiment with this to get to the look you have in mind. And then we'll set our keyframe here for these two um, parameters. And then 10 frames later, set the keyframes again and bring everything back down. Well, technically for aberration strength, we need to bring that all the way down to zero because at this point we don't want this effect at all. All right, let's bring this back to the beginning and then we're going to texture and then under texture, uh, bring JPEG damage node into the node tree. Here, we're going to play with the quality parameter first, bring that up. And then we're going to bring up resolution parameter as well a little bit. And then we're going to bring up frequency scale as well. I really like this node. I think it definitely adds a little bit more texture to the text and make it look like the texture is being ruined. Okay, so uh, once everything looks good, we're just gonna set our keyframe here um, for frequency scale and the resolution parameter. And then 10 frames later, uh, bring both uh, back down again, uh, just so that we don't get this effect at this point. Alrighty, to finish building up our texture, we're going back to stylize. And then under stylize, we're going to bring the scan lines node into the node tree. And here we're going to play with the line frequency uh, parameter, line sharpness parameter, bring those up. And then we're going to bring down line width. So this particular node definitely gives us some additional texture uh, from a lot of the glitchy text effects I have seen in the past. They all have, or a lot of them have these thin lines running through them. So this definitely gives it that look. And then we're just gonna finish up by keyframing for line frequency. We're gonna bring that all the way down uh, so that we don't get this effect at all. Okay, so now that we're done with texture, then we're going to build our movement. And this is what's going to tie everything together to give it that glitchy text look. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is to go into transform and then bring the transform node into the node tree system. And here we are going to bring a masking node, rectangle masking node and connect it to transform. And then we're going to adjust the parameters of the masking node. The idea is that we want to isolate part of the text so that we can twist it, we can split it, move it left and right to give it that you know, twitchy look. So here, if I go to transform one and play with the position X parameter, already you can see that part of this text is being twitched up. Okay, so then we're gonna go to tools, go to effect, bring duplicate node into um, into the uh, in between rectangle and transform one. So the idea here is that, as you can see, uh, if we only focus on duplicate, the idea is that we want to create multiple versions of the masking node. So we don't have to create everything manually. And then uh, play with the center parameter so that all these masking nodes will cover the text. So copies, we're gonna select three, and then center parameter, uh, we're going to just play with that to get to the desired effect, desired look that you want. But what you already see right here is that part of this text, well, most part of this text is being uh, split up um, and it's given them, it gives it that spasm uh, kind of feel to the text. Um, so then it just, yeah, it comes down to a matter of playing with the center parameter of the duplicate node, moving the masking node around, playing with that. And here, uh, everything looks okay. And then we're just gonna pretty much try to replicate this same process again, bring the duplicate node, uh, bring transform node into the node tree, bring rectangle masking node and duplicate node here, create three copies and adjusting the parameters of the masking node. Uh, but the idea is the same. We want to isolate parts of the text and then start to uh, make parts of the text go the other direction here. So when we come to transform two, as you see that when I move the prisoner X over to the left a little, so now part of the text is going to the left, going the other direction. And then as we start to play with the center parameter in the duplicate node, now you're gonna see that 
the uh, rectangle uh, masking nodes are overlapping each other, it actually creates a pretty cool look. Um, so don't worry about you know them overlapping, as I mentioned earlier. And uh, here I'm going to uh, come to transform one, uh, play with the precision X parameter again, and then set the keyframe. And then 10 frames later, bring this node, uh, bring the par uh, this parameter uh, back down to uh, its original. Uh, same with transform two, um, set the keyframe for precision X. At the beginning here, play with this parameter a little bit more uh, to get to that look. And then uh, 10 frames later, we're going to uh, keyframe it, uh, bring it all the way back down. Okay, guys, so really it comes down to playing with these key parameters to get to the desired effect that you are after, you know, center parameters, that's a key one, uh, masking node for sure, and then precision X. Okay, so now let's go ahead and come back and have a look at the finished effect. So guys, this looks really good and we are pretty much done at this point. But just like any effect, we can further fine tune and enhance it. So let's come back to the Fusion page, go to Transform 1, and we'll make everything go away at the 8th frame uh, for uh, our Precision X parameter instead of the 10th. So we're now playing with the timing of the movement. Okay, then we're going to go to Transform 2. Here we're going to make everything go away at the 12th parameter instead of the 10th. So between the two, we have a bit of a delay there. Okay, so then we're going to Spline Editor, and then we're gonna play with the speed of the movement uh, for Precision X for both Transform 1 and the Transform 2 nodes. So once you make all these changes, let's come back to the editor page, the edit page, and then have a look at the revised effect. So guys, what you will notice is that we have a slightly different look here because of the change in timing and also change in the speed of the movement. So you can continue to work on these and play with this, uh, play with these parameters un uh, until you get to the desired effect that you are after. Okay guys, this is basically how we can create a glitchy text effect from scratch in DaVinci Resolve. Hope this helps and I will see you next time.